Welcome to the Noscars, y'all. Today we will be correcting the mistakes of the 1990 Oscar broadcast, meaning that we will be looking at the films of 1989. And I want to say that it was an amazing year for black folks in movies, but in a moment we'll look at the board, which tells us there were 11 movies between top 100 box office and everything that was nominated for an Oscar 90 category that featured black folks in any visible kind of way. Lean on Me, A Dry White Season, Lethal Weapon 2, Driving Miss Daisy, Field of Dreams, Harlem Nights, See No Evil, Hear No Evil, Do the Right Thing, Glory, Police Academy 6, and Tap. And that's our say. That's it. Uh, Important to mention that one of those movies won Best Picture. Uh, two of them were up for it. Uh, but in a year where you had glory finding black people fighting for their own freedom, and you had Do the Right Thing with an almost straight across the board black cast and crew, uh, and then you had a movie about a nice white lady who let an illiterate black man drive her car. And guess which one got best picture? So let's shout out some of the amazing things that did happen in film in 1989 uh, that didn't happen in the 1990 Oscars. Let's start with Do the Right Thing because here's the way that history runs the fix on you. Most people, especially white people, are really surprised when you tell them Spike Lee, though nominated for two Oscars in his life, has never been nominated for Best Director. Let that sink in! Spike motherfucking genius Lee never been nominated as Best Director. This year, he got uh, a writing nomination for Do the Right Thing, and a few years later, a producing credit for uh, the documentary for Little Girls. Watch for Little Girls. If you have not watched for Little Girls, watch for Little Girls. Uh, so, I'm going to shout him out. I'm, I'm going to try, try and stay a purist. I'm going to break it. I know. I'm going to break my rule. Uh, but I'm going to try and stick with the notion of shouting out folks who have never been nominated for an Oscar just to illuminate the fact that there are so many. Uh, then we run into four folks, four geniuses who we have lost, uh, who passed before they could ever, ever even have a chance at uh, attending an Oscar ceremony as a nominee. Uh, Richard Pryor for Harlem Nights. Did, did no one ever just stop and go, oh my god, I always enjoy watching Richard Pryor and goddamn anything? Nope. Uh, criminally underrated South African actor, one of my favoritest favorites. If you are not familiar with the name Zake Smokai, look him up and especially look up his devastating work as, as a father bound to a system of apartheid in a dry white season. We'll get back to a dry white season in a moment. Uh, nearest and dearest to my heart, and if you, like me, are just on the agile side of 40, you will know Lynn Thigpen as the chief from Where in the World is Carmen San Diego. Uh, you may also remember that Anytime she was in the frame on Lean On Me, she smoldered with the essence of a mother who was not going to let her baby be treated like an animal. Ugh! But I'm saving the best for last, and also the worst for last, because shame on you, Academy, for allowing Mr. Ossie Davis to die without ever being recognized for anything, let alone his work in Do the Right Thing. 
And now we're going to take it to the podium. I am thrilled and appalled to announce that the recipient of the 1990 Oscar is one of the foremothers of black women directors. Last year, when Ava DuVernay was not recognized for her masterful should have won the thing work on Selma, what not everyone realized is that where other folks, where white folks get to lay groundwork and yield something big for the people who come after them, uh, there were people who laid groundwork just for Ava DuVernay to almost be recognized. In 1989, a French-born woman of African descent named Eugène Paulson directed a movie called A Dry White Season. She adapted the screenplay from a book that she had acquired the rights to, and she was committed to telling the story of apartheid as it affects real human beings. This woman created scenes that, that look like, like postcards in a place suddenly you understand, even though an hour ago you had no idea it existed. This is masterful work. Uh, in addition to depicting a South Africa of riots and complacent white folk and devastating injustice and innocent protesters who were murdered, she also elicited some of the most stunning performances that I have seen. She leveraged almost no reputation whatsoever and simply her will to make an amazing movie to the degree which this veritable unknown black woman was able to request every white actor and actress she wanted. She got Brando! And no Oscar. Jean Paulson, you are amazing and genius, and this Oscar is for you. Thank you.